this video, I'm going to show you how we can take the project from the previous tutorial so that you can deploy it to an online cloud service called Streamlit. This way, instead of you using your Cree AI project on your desktop and only on your computer, you'll be able to host it on a server and you'll be able to share it with others if you want to show it off. I think one of the biggest values that comes from creating AI technologies, creating AI projects is being able to share with others, even if it's just to show the cool thing that you made. If you're still new to working with Crew AI, if you don't have a lot of programming experience, don't worry, I'm going to walk you step by step on how to do this. I'm going to show you about version control. I'm going to show you how you can deploy this using Streamlit. This tutorial is made assuming that you don't even have a GitHub account, and that's actually one of the first steps of what we're going to do. Also, just want to let you know that this is the last video in this series. So if you already took the time to install all the tools that you needed with the first video, and then you even went so far as to download and run the Cree AI project as we did in the second video, where you'll be able to take your project full circle by now actually deploying it to a cloud server or rather a cloud service. So I think you had to yourself to finish this race. So when we're talking about deployment, basically what we're referring to is we're going to take this project that you currently have running on your computer that's referred to as your development environment or that you're running it locally. We're going to take that code and we're going to upload it to GitHub. GitHub is now going to be basically where your code lives. That's going to be your code repository. From then, what we're going to do is we're going to deploy your application by using the code that's saved in GitHub to the cloud. The service we're going to use is just going to be Streamlit Cloud. And the reason why we're going to use Streamlit Cloud is because not only did they provide the application interface for your Cree AI project front end, but they also have a free tier for hosting your Cree AI applications. So now instead of you having to start up your laptop, having to run VS Code, run the program in order to use it or to show it to other people, well, your Cree AI application is now going to be hosted on the cloud online. So you'll be able to share the link to your application with others if you want them to use your awesome Cree AI project. And the only things you're going to need for this part of the project is going to be creating a GitHub account and creating a Streamlit account, which is really just connecting your GitHub account to Streamlit. So this is where we're going to start using some Git commands. And what we're going to do is we're going to open a new terminal. So the first thing you're going to need to do is create a GitHub account. Again, that's just going to be at github.com. It's completely free. And you're going to be using this in the future if you plan on uploading your code, sharing your code, or doing other deployments. And once you create it, your page is going to look like this. We haven't added any files, so it's pretty much going to be empty. It's just giving you some instructions here on how to add your files to the repository. But we're going to go over that in this video as well. But now we have a place in GitHub where we can push our code to. And push is just get terminology. You don't upload code, you push your code to GitHub. So the first thing we're going to do in our project is we're going to check what remote repository is being referenced within our project. I'm assuming that this create project that you built, you started out with the template code that I gave you. So there's going to be a reference to the older GitHub link that I provided to you. So we need to remove that first in order for you to change where you're going to upload your code to. So the command we're going to do for that is just going to be get remote dash V. That just means version. And you can see here the origin of the current code that you're on. It's pretty much telling you that it started from this GitHub repository, which was called Crew AI Project 1. And of course, that doesn't match the new repository that we created because this is a blank repository that started out from scratch. Of course, you won't be able to push your code to this repository because I own that. That's under my account. So we need to remove this link from your project. So the way we're going to remove this reference to a previous GitHub repository that's that is associated with my account. We're going to go to the folder where your current project is saved. As you can see here, my project is saved under users, my name, and then multiple model crew. And this folder, we're going to delete the files related to GitHub. These are hidden files, but you can make them visible with command shift period. And this is going to be the reference to all the older GitHub stuff that we were doing. And we're just going to move this to the trash. So now we do get status. You'll see we get this error. It's basically saying that there's no reference to any GitHub repository. So now we're going to do the get init command. And from here, we can do the next steps in order to add our code to our GitHub account. So there are three main steps you need to do in order to move your code from your machine into GitHub. Those steps are adding, committing, and pushing. First, we're going to add our changes to the list. Then we're going to commit those changes. And finally, we're going to push all those changes to GitHub. And when I started out in school, these commands seem a little bit redundant, a little repetitive to me. So I'm going to give you a quick analogy that I think might be helpful as you do this in order for you to understand why these commands exist and why that's going to help you later on as you start building other projects. So think about when you go grocery shopping. The first thing you do is you create items that you add to a list, right? After you create these items to your shopping list, you then go to the store and you commit to what you're going to buy by adding those items that you found around the store into your cart. In this same form, when you use the add command in Git, 
you're really just keeping track of the changes similar to how before you go shopping you really just want to keep track of the items you want to get. and just in the same way that making a shopping list of the items you want to buy doesn't change the fact that you don't have anything in your fridge and that's a matter doing a git add to changes you've made to your code doesn't actually upload it to your repository so after adding the file changes or doing a git add we do a git commit that is we commit to changes same thing with git you've committed to a list of changes you want to keep for your code but at this step you still don't have that code available in your github repository yet after you do your git commit this is where you do a git push and this is the command that pushes the code from your local desktop to your github account same way that at the grocery store you would push your cart through the checkout lane i know for a lot of you this is the first time working with github so i just want you to have some clarity on the context of why we use github or why these commands are used in that order and i didn't just want to go off starting to type these comments without you understanding why we were doing these things so again with our first part we're going to do our git add and after the git add command you want to add only the files that you want to exist within your repository and for the project that we downloaded on the previous video we only want these four python files that's agents.py, main.py, streamlitapp.py, and task.py. And the last file we also want is this pyproject.toml. So we do get add agents.py, get add main.py, get add streamlitapp.py, get add task.py. And that's what we're going to do, get add pyproject.toml. So now that we added all our code changes to our list, we need to do what's called a git commit. Because remember, first we added our items to our shopping list, and then we're gonna add those items to our cart. So the command for that is just git commit dash M. The M just stands for message. And in quotations, we're just gonna put a little bit of information regarding what these changes are related to. We could just call it first commit, then presenter. And you'll get a message like this once your commit is done. So if you look back to our GitHub page, really that commit that we did was literally just copy pasted from here. So then let's go ahead and do the next command, which is git branch main. And all this command does is it's gonna rename the current branch we're on to main. So when you're working with code bases, you're working with different repositories, you can have different versions of the same project that you're working with. It's typical that you'll have a development branch, you'll have a certification branch, and you'll have a production branch. As you start working with bigger projects and with bigger teams, version control does become a little bit more important. But for a project this small, we're really just going to use the main branch. And with this command, that's what we're going to call it. As you can see here on my terminal, it changed from master to main. So now we're going to do this command from our GitHub page which if you read here, git remote at origin. So all this is doing is within our local project, we're adding the reference to a remote repository. The remote repository is described by this link. We're calling this remote repository origin, and that's what we use the remote command for. So let's just copy all this and paste it. After we add the reference to our new repository, then we're going to do git push origin main. All this means is that we're pushing code from our main branch, which exists locally in our computer, to our remote branch which is called origin and you'll get a message that looks like this once your code is done uploading the way you can define it is in your repository page just click refresh and you'll be able to see all your code files in here so that completes this step where we pushed our code from our local environment to github and now that we have our code in github we'll be able to deploy this code on the cloud using Streamlit's free services. I know GitHub maybe seemed a little bit frustrating. Maybe you were a little bit confused because you hadn't worked with it before. Let me tell you just the fact that you're working with it right now that puts you ahead of so many people that are just thinking about trying to get into technology, trying to get into software engineering, trying to get into AI, because now, because now you've been exposed to a very crucial aspect of deploying applications, of building applications, which is version control. And like I always tell you guys, make sure you understand the concepts. Don't try to memorize commands. I could have just as easily walked you through the entire Git part in about 30 seconds without saying why we're just using the commands. I could have said, type this, type that, enter it, and then we're gonna get this result. But I know that wouldn't have been very helpful for you in the long run. So I'd rather explain these important principles to you at a pace that's understandable and in a way that I think will give you long-term benefits, not just short-term results. And to be honest with you, for things like Git, for version control, ChatGPT is definitely going to be your best friend. I still use it all the time. No shame in that. So now to start on the deployment of our application, let's go ahead and go to streamlit.io slash cloud. And you're going to get this community cloud website. You're just going to click get started. Here I already have my account. When you log in, you're going to get an option to sign up. 
which you can do through email, through your Gmail, but you can also do it with your GitHub account. I just linked it directly to my GitHub account and that's gonna be super beneficial because in this next step, when you click create app up here on this corner, you're gonna see this option to deploy app and because it's linked to your GitHub account, you're gonna be able to see the list of your repositories that already exist. So here you're basically telling Streamlit what code to look at for your deployment. So for us, it's just called create deployment. We only have one branch, so it's gonna be the main branch. And the main file is gonna be the Streamlit app.py. Here you can select a custom URL if it's available, but I don't need it to be custom. I'm just gonna delete this after today, so I'm gonna leave it like this. But the next part is gonna be super important here in advanced settings is going to be where you're going to add your API keys. And just like in our secrets.tml file that we created in the previous video, you're also going to format the names for your API keys the same as here, all uppercase with underscores for spaces, and then between the double quotations is where you can enter your API key values. And once you add them on here, make sure to click save. And now that we have all that set up, we're going to hit this deploy button right here. And here you're going to get this little screen telling you that your app is getting ready. And at the bottom right here where it says manage app, you can actually see the logs of all the installations that are going on in the background in order to run your app. And when it's all said and done, you get this message here at the end that says process dependencies. And if you scroll up through these logs, guys, you see that this you'll see that this looks very similar to when you did the poetry install no root command on your terminal. So your cloud deployment is very similar to that process. And that's why it's so important that we have our .toml file and all the dependencies and libraries that we need mentioned in there. Because just in the same way that you need to install all these dependencies on your computer in order to run your project, the same thing goes for when you run this on the cloud. And honestly, I think Streamlit provides a super user-friendly way to do this deployment. So shout out to the person that recommended this to me in one of our one-on-one -on -one calls. Obviously, I'm not gonna call you out by name, but Again, I really appreciate you, so just wanted to give you that shout out anyway. And here from the link up here, guys, you can see that that's gonna be the link to access your career AI application. So let's do a little test run, right? And then afterwards, I'll show you what you need to do in case you make changes to your code and you need to redeploy it again through GitHub. So the main topic we wanna know about is boxing, best training drills, and then we're gonna click search. Similar to your terminal in VS Code, you will be able to see on your page the crew AI agents as they run. And actually, I think it does run quite a bit faster on here. And there we go. We got our finished results on our crew AI project running on the cloud. Here we have our basic principles. We have the links to some articles. We even got some YouTube videos, even though I'm not using any of the YouTube tools. And we got some book references right here. So now let's say you want to make a change on your code and you want that change to show up on this current project that you have for crew AI, which you've now deployed online. How do you go about making those changes and making sure that the changes that you make on VS Code actually reflect on your working project that you have online? Well, let's test that out real quick. So let's say we want to change the large language model we're using. That's in our agents.py file. And if you recall that, that's gonna be on this line right here that says change your model here. Let's say we don't wanna pay for GPT-4 queries. Let's say we wanna use GPT-3.5. So let's just put GPT-3. Here we have it as GPT-3, so we can leave it like that. Then we click Save. But saving the changes to the file in VS Code only saves these changes to your computer. It doesn't do anything to the code that's being used by Streamlit to run your app. So let's look at our little diagram again. The code that you have on your computer, you have to push to GitHub, and that's what will deploy it in the cloud. That applied the first time we did it, and that's always going to apply whenever you make any other changes in the future. So if you want to check what files need to be updated in GitHub, all you have to do is do the git status command. And here you'll get this line that says changes, not stage for commit. And it's telling you that in the agents.py file, which is highlighted in red, there's changes that have been made that aren't being accounted for in GitHub. So it's basically saying that the version of agents.py that you have in your desktop doesn't match the version of agents.py that's in GitHub. So now we're gonna go through the process of what we did earlier where we add, commit, and then push. So that's git add agents.py, then that's git commit, and then our message for our commit, which is just change the large language model to GPT-3. Now that we made that commit, we're gonna do our git push command. Again, it's just git push origin main. 
And if we look back on our Streamlit project, you can see here that it automatically starts pulling the changes from GitHub because it detected that change in the repository. But then you get this error that says updating files failed. So what you can do in this case is just click these three dots here on your menu and you're going to click reboot app. Luckily, this isn't going to take as long as the first time that you set this up. So it'll go by a lot quicker. And just like that, it's back up and running again. And one last thing, guys, remember, this application that you're running, that you're hosting, is accessing ChatGPT or Grok or Serper using your API keys. You don't want to post this out in some Discord server or just start sending the link to everybody either. No, because then you're going to get all these charges. So if you want to pause or delete your application, you simply just go to your Streamlit menu. Here you can see the app site. You're going to click these dots. You're going to go to settings and for sharing, you can set this to private. So only specific people will have access to the app and you'll have to add the emails of those people in here, similar to like when you share a Google Doc or a Google Sheet that's private on your Google Drive. So just wanted to make sure you knew that. And also you could just simply click the dots here and just delete the app entirely. You can always redeploy it. So I know I probably say this a lot or it seems like I do, but really I do wanna say congratulations for finishing this set of tutorials. I find it very inspiring and very fulfilling when I talk to some of you in the one-on-ones and you tell me how you've only been working with technology, you've only been working with coding for maybe a few months, a lot of you less than a year. And as somebody that went through a journey very similar to yours, I know that technology, especially at the beginning, can seem very overwhelming and very complicated. Unfortunately for me, I didn't grow up in the age of AI, of large language models. So even though there was multiple times where I tried coding when I was younger, even when I would try to find guides or tutorials, it always seemed like so much and just very complicated. Eventually, I was able to accomplish my goal of working as a software engineer, but I still have that memory of those times where I just felt just very discouraged. So my goal with these videos is to get you to a place where you feel comfortable implementing these new technologies in such a way that you get a useful introduction to a lot of these new concepts. And if you decide to spread out and work with other technologies or other projects that are maybe a little bit more complex or maybe take a little bit more time, I want you to feel like you can go into those tasks with more confidence and more exposure in you know just some of the basic principles. I really appreciate the comments and I really appreciate the feedback that you guys give me both on the Facebook group and on the Discord server. I especially appreciate the feedback that you guys give me in the one-on-ones because just like this tech AI journey is new to you, in a very similar way, this journey of teaching you guys all this is pretty new to me as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.